Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel for today's video. Pat McGrath. <laughs> we are going to be talking about what I picked up from the new Divine Rose 2 collection. So if you want to see my thoughts, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I'm a pro- oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys, particularly Pat McGrath. You guys know Pat McGrath is my favorite brand. So I picked up almost everything that was new. So I got the Eternal Eden quad. I got the highlight, which just wait and then i got the two liquid lipsticks i missed out on the divine rose 2 lipstick i meant to pick that up and then i forgot at checkout so i didn't get that which i'm kind of sad about but i do have i think the most popular products that you guys are probably wondering about anyways okay so without further ado i'm no wasting time let's get into it so i want to start off with you know the most popular piece that you guys are curious about. This is the Eternal Eden Luxe Quad. So it is going to come in this packaging right here. Major details, 12 month shelf life, made in USA of US and imported ingredients. She been doing that a lot lately. And you can get it on the Pat McGrath website as well as Sephora. So this collection is currently on both of those two websites. Sephora gets a little bit more of a limited selection, but you know, Pat McGrath's shipping is a little wishy-washy. So a lot of you wait until it comes to Sephora. So it is available on both. I like to order from the Pat McGrath website. I still feel like I get it a little bit sooner. I am located in Maryland. So I'm a little bit closer to their distribution factory, which is in New Jersey. So that's why I prefer Pat McGrath but they definitely are wishy-washy. I do think Sephora is a little bit more reliable as far as shipping, but things happen. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this guy is $58. It comes in the normal black lacquered square packaging. You open her up. Oh, I was showing it to you upside down. You do have a nice mirror. So yeah, another rose palette for Miss Pat McGrath. Listen, y'all, okay? <laughs> I love Pat. Mother, I love you. I love you. But with the last rose palette that came out, I think we've, I think we've had enough. That being said, you still, you still can take my money. So whatever. Obviously, it's a very flattering color story and people are buying it. I just, I need new color stories. <laughs> I do. Okay, anyways, we're going to put on a little bit of OG Urban Decay Primer Potion as my eye base. And I do want to grab for a blush in this quad just to see. So while that's drying down, I'm gonna take my Esam V50 brush. So in here, you're getting two mattes, a shimmer, and then I would say more of a foiled metallic shade here, swatched beautifully. Let me start off by saying that. So we have more of like a cooler tone color right here. I'm gonna lightly, yeah. It's a little bit too gray, I think, to be a blush, at least on my skin tone. It does add a flush, but a bit too gray. So let me just make it even. That's okay, that's what I expected, but that's why this is a reveal. I'm testing things out for you. It does work as a blush, but I do feel as though there is a bit of a gray cast because this does have a bit of a cooler undertone. In order to brighten that up, we're gonna go in with the brightest pinky shade. Now, be light-handed with this. Hear me banging my brush off. I'm gonna tap it on my hand. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the pink here. These are eyeshadows, you know, they aren't blushes, so they are going to be more pigmented. They are going to be more difficult to apply as a blush, but let's say you're on vacation or you travel in, uh, you know, a new world. COVID doesn't exist anymore. You know, the vaccines have all been distributed and you don't have a blush or you don't have room to squeeze in a blush. You can most definitely make it work. You can. You know, I'm staring at my, my dry, dry lips. So we have liquid lips in this collection. So I'm just gonna help myself in my Kiehl's <laughs> lip balm while this is all happening. Okay, so blush, it's okay. You know, I, I still would like to grab for my normal blushes or for Pat to finally come out with blushes. I mean, wouldn't this collection have been great for blushes to come out? I'm just saying. Let's just, let's get into it. We're gonna start off with this cooler color Forbidden Fruit. I'm using an Esam V34 and whew, 
Okay, we are not sure on pigmentation. Let's blend her out. Now, based on my swatches and just by feeling, this is her US formula. She does have an Italian formula in her larger mothership palettes, which I can tell the difference between. Her US formula, still wonderful, workable, all of that. But as you know, I just think Italy does it better as far as eyeshadows for the most part. And in her formula, her Italian formula, it is better than the US formula. But I just, as far as the metallic shades go, especially, and her shimmer shades, so there isn't a special shade in here, but when her palettes are made in Italy, they do seem a bit creamier, have a little bit of an extra punch. Unless it's a palette with a special shade, it is a US formula, so that's not new for her brand. I'm going to run this along the lower lash line as well. We're doing a very simple look today, and I really love this color. It's like a really muted color that is very flattering with rosy tones. I'm gonna just use the same brush. We're gonna go into the brighter color and we're just gonna brighten everything up. Essentially, I'm pretty much going almost right on top of that first color we laid down. And you can see it's peeking through, but it's now just given the look life. Very beautiful. Just right on top. Okay, and then this metallic shade right here, stunning. I already know. Okay, I, I knew it. Stunning, so creamy, so foiled. It has a little bit like of a mauve lilac-y kind of tone to it. It does lean more rose, but it is a gorgeous shade. I have a shade that I'm going to compare it to at the end when I do my comparisons. Then we're gonna just kind of blend. And then finally, we're gonna go in with Temptation right here. It has like a golden-y peach tone to it. It's not a unique shade. I have a few palettes that also have this color just in general from multiple brands but it is a nice touch to this palette just to brighten everything up open up the eye it's nothing super special you know it's just a plain shimmer formula it certainly does its job and I think it has its place in this quad to really create something cohesive and usable it's a gorgeous palette it worked really well I'm going to put on some liner and lashes and I'll be back and I'll compare it to a couple of the palettes that I have in my collection liner lashes all of that are on everything will be linked in the description box but let's do some comparisons i put out three of her rose palettes just to see how they compared now i compared them last night so i know how they compare but we're gonna act like i haven't yet <laughs> i was a curious cat last night and i already applied everything so I want to pull out the baby mothership, let me put it this way, sorry for the mirror, Rose Decadence right here. And then here's the Eternal Eden. Honestly, these are not really comparable at all in my opinion. None of the undertones are really the same. I'm going to do a comparison between those two shades. But other than that, even last night when I swatched them, there really was no comparison at all. So let me just take this one just to show you. As you can see, I have the Eternal Eden here. And these are similar, I would say. This one is more of a light pink shade. So that is similar, but honestly, it's the kind of shade where on the eye, the shift is actually very noticeable. Excuse you. The shift is actually very noticeable. So it's a little bit more golden from the Eternal Eden quad, but they are close, but that's just like one shade, you know? The rest, very, very different. Okay, now we're gonna do the original Divine Rose palette. So this is the $125 Made in Italy formula, and I want you to notice. You can see that the Mothership palette's a little bit more dull, for lack of a better word, because this is so bright, and the Mothership is more cool. So when I was doing swatch comparisons, the only thing that really stood out to me was I wanted to compare this shade to the more mauve shade right here, and Eternal Eden, Divine Rose, you can see so much more cool. Maybe this shade compared to the deeper shimmer shade in Eternal Eden. It's just overall a cooler toned palette. It's a little bit more muted. It's not going to pull as punchy. If you have the original Divine Rose, honestly, I think this is a nice way as like a pick me up to pair with the Divine Rose because it will add some brightness and color to your look. Now we're going to do Divine Rose 2. I'm so excited for you guys because the chroma pink packaging came back in stock this time so it is available on both Sephora and Pat McGrath if you want this amazing packaging. So I will say this 
Divine Rose 2 is definitely going to be a closer match to Eternal Eden. This is the most similar palette to Eternal Eden. I would say this is a great extension of the Divine Rose 2 palette, which I believe is what it was intended as. The shades that I wanted to compare is mostly to this guy right here. So I'm going to swatch both of these shades just so you can see. So these are from the Divine Rose 2 Eternal Eden. You can see not even close really. I'll show you this shade right here. Much more white compared to Eternal Eden. And then as far as everything else, I don't think anything is really similar. I'm gonna just compare for you this shade, the hot pink. And obviously they're a different finish, but they are a similar shade of pink, but you have a shimmer and you have a matte. But here's the thing, like this palette in general, it's not a unique palette and you can get a similar look using Pat McGrath palettes. If we're talking dupe for dupe, there's maybe one or two two similar shades. <clears throat> Why is my voice cracking? Morning. There's maybe one or two similar shades, but if you're like me and you're makeup order and you're looking like just to see how close it is to the other palettes, it's not. But of course, it's not a unique color story, so you can get a similar look like this even using Pat McGrath palettes. All right, let's move on to the item that I'm so excited about. So we have a new highlighter. This is $48. It is the Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlighter. So it's that Skin Fetish formula where it's like a balmy, not balmy, but like a squishy putty kind of texture. So it's gonna come in this packaging right here. Gorgeous as always. I can never throw away these boxes. They're so stunning. I'm loving the packaging here. So this has an 18 month shelf life and it is made in Italy. You get 10 grams of product in here. And then here is what it looks like. You do have a mirror and then here is the highlighter. Very different from the previous highlighter that did release last collection. So last collection, it was a very weighty product and it was very, very expensive. You actually had 6.5 grams of product. So already this is a way better deal. I just think it's more functional and they are not similar. I'm just gonna do the comparison right now. Here is the new Ultra Glow Highlighter and here is last year's. So if you bought the other highlighter from the Holiday Collection, not similar at all, complete different formula complete different color, complete different packaging, and in my opinion, a better deal. And I've already used this highlight, so I love it. So get ready. Uh, I like this highlighter way more than the one that came out last year. So we're gonna take just a little bit of it right here and it picks up great on a brush. I know it said it's like that kind of putty formula, but it works great with a brush. <laughs> brush. <laughs> I could not speak this morning. Just brightened up my eyes. Let me get my highlighter brush. I'm using a Kaleidos H1 brush. No fallout. Glowy. It has a golden pink shift to it. It's stunning, you guys. Absolutely a breathtaking highlighter. I haven't felt so excited about a highlighter since my Charlotte Tilbury one that I talked about in every single video for like two months straight. So it's a highlighter. Uh, I find it to be pretty smoothing for what it is. You know, obviously like I have a bump right here. You can see it's emphasized by the highlighter, but it doesn't emphasize texture in a bad way. It's quite smoothing compared to most highlighters and it gives the most gorgeous glow. I think it's gonna be very versatile on a lot of skin tones. Comparing it to the holiday highlighter, this like didn't blend out for me. It was a little bit more stiff. It has more of a wet feeling to it, but not in a good way. It just didn't blend out on the skin as well. I felt as though it didn't look as seamless on the skin. Whereas the highlighter this year really just applies so seamlessly. It blends into the skin seamlessly. I'm really excited about this. Honestly, I'm more excited about this highlighter than I am the quad. I think this highlighter is really, really special. Last product that I have to talk about are the two liquid lipsticks. So these are the Liquilus Legendary Wear Matte Lipsticks. They are $30 each. So they are both going to come in the same packaging. Just, I mean, beautiful rose gold packaging. 12 month shelf life. Both of these are made in the USA and of imported ingredients. So the packaging themselves is a very plain, kind of black packaging. I wish it was a little bit more luxe. And then let me show you the 
wand. Really nice and easy to apply. So there are two shades. We have Divine Nude, looks like that. Then the other shade is Divine Rose. So you can see it's a little bit more deep, a little bit more warmth to it. Interestingly enough, this is not Pat McGrath's first liquid lipstick formula. You are an OG if you have any of her old formula. This is from when her brand first came out. So Possessed was actually my favorite color from her. It was my favorite liquid lipstick. It has the same wand and they're like the same, right? Pretty much. So, okay, I feel like this is the old possessed. And then she actually did have a divine nude. So I just wanted to see if they were the same. This is the old one. Yeah, I mean, so these colors, honestly, I think are redone. Like they're the same repeats. But nobody really had these. I feel like I was the only person to use these. Very, very interesting. So I have personally tried both of these colors on from the old formula and from the new formula. So let's do Divine Nude first. So Divine Nude is described as a lush nude beige. Very, very pretty. It does have that beigey undertone to it. What I discovered from this formula when I wore it yesterday, less is more with this product. The less you apply, the better because I do find it to really emphasize the lines on your lips and if you put too much it felt very very drying and very uncomfortable so it's not my favorite liquid lipstick formula if I'm being honest the less product you apply the more lightweight and comfortable it's going to feel so if you reapply it's kind of sucks it feels very drying to me when I reapply but that first initial layer if you do it really thin it's not too uncomfortable let me show you what divine rose looks like this is my favorite type of lip color again try and go as thin as possible with this application. That is beautiful, right? Okay, so it's time for uh, my closing thoughts. As you can see, here's the official Divine Rose 2 finished look. So we'll start off with the quad. I think the quad is really nice. The quality does not disappoint me at all. I think it's really a great quality. If you enjoy the color story, I absolutely would recommend picking it up. You won't be disappointed. It's not necessary in the collection. I'm not gonna tell you that you need it because especially if you already have some Divine Rose palettes, you don't need it, but as a collector, I'm very happy to have it. I think it represents the entire brand well. It's just, it's not original. I just would like to see some new color stories. The highlighter for me is the most exciting thing about this collection. I just think it's such a step up from the previous highlighter that I was disappointed by. It is beautiful. It's expensive, but I think it's worth it if you like the finer things of highlighters and definitely my favorite thing that came out in this collection. And then the liquid lipsticks, I'm not too impressed by if I'm being honest. It's just not my favorite liquid lipstick formula. I'm pretty picky. Love the colors. I think the color, stunning, both of them. Divine Rose is personally my favorite, but I think if you have a fair skin tone, Divine Nude will be lovely on you. You know, I'm only 24 years old and is really showing off the lines on my lips and it feels quite drying to me on the lips. Honestly, I feel like her old formula didn't do that. I feel like this formula is better. I don't even know if they're the same formula, but I never thought what I thought about these new ones. So I would stick with her lipsticks, in my opinion. Not a big fan of these. But in the day and the age that we live in, transfer proof. So that might do it for you. All right, guys, there we have it. That was my official review on the Divine Rose 2 collection. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you're curious about anything else that I'm wearing, it will be down in the description box. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.